Hello there and welcome to episode 10 of my playthrough of the 2018 Hairbrain Schemes Battletech game. Today I'm going to be doing a stock taking episode, so I'm just going to have a look at a few things and give a bit of a synopsis of where I currently am in, um, in the game. And I'm going to move on to a little bit of like a, a theory piece, if you want to call it that, on... Um, variants of mechs that I'd consider to be red herring as against variants of mechs that I consider to be like gold standard so we'll discuss that for a little while and then I'm going to just go and do a random mission in the command center so let's get into this now, I just want to kind of give a bit of a like a full like overview really of where we are so we'll go into navigation first of all we can just have a look at where we currently are on the map. You can see that we've explored now much of the periphery. There's only this kind of like western side that I've yet to venture in. Um, we've cut out as well a nice piece of um, space for the Oregon restoration. So it's pretty much now like half and half, which is kind of reflective of where we are at in the game because we're now exactly halfway through the priority missions. And at the moment, I'm right out here on the... Right, right on the cusp of Torian space uh, and Directorate space, so we could like plan uh, like a rear attack on either of our enemies uh, from this position, but we won't be doing that, obviously. Uh, this is Gauchin, and um, yeah, it, it's always good to just kind of have a little bit of a scout round. First of all, because it's interesting, like you can read the system summaries and you come across like uh, different kind of mission types and get better equipment in the stores and different kind of mechs, things like that. So, you know, if you um, are willing to do it, it's well worth just having a, a bit of a, like a, a look around the, the map and uh, see what they've written in the game. And, you know, like for me, I, I enjoy doing that because I really like this game. So it's, it's not really a grind for me to do that. It's quite fun just to kind of go to a system, do a random mission and then move on to the next system. You don't necessarily make a massive amount of sea bills unless you stay in a system for like a prolonged period of time and then basically just um, try and like farm or do as many uh, missions as you can and get the sea bills and the salvage. Um, so that's where we currently are. Uh, next up I'm just going to nip into the captain's quarters and you can see here, um, much to the chagrin of uh, many an Inner Sphere player, you can see I'm very very friendly with the Capellans. I've purposely done that. I believe I talked about doing this very early on in this playthrough. It is a good idea to befriend the Capellans. They have many, many mission types available, especially um, in the periphery in the early game. So you get a lot of like random Capella missions that when you do it and you improve your relationship with them, you then end up getting more money for doing missions for them and like better salvage rights, things like that. So kind of set your, your pride aside, really, if you're a, like traditionally, a, I don't know, Steiner player or a Davian player or whatever. And um, yeah, you can have very, get good things out of the Capellans in this game. That's not say that you can't eventually go and betray them, which I probably will do, because if I, th I think if I am going to make an alliance with anyone in this game at any point, it will be the Fed Sons or the Magistracy of Canopus. Uh, speaking of the Magistracy of Canopus, you see we're also honoured with them as well, so 83 out of 100, so we're almost at like full like honour level here on the table, same with the Capellans. We are loved by the Taurians and the uh, Pirates, Taurians understandably because we're at war with them, and everyone else is pretty much vanilla. We've, we seem to have done a few more missions for the Free Worlds League, so we've got a little bit of good like kudos there, but everyone else is sat at what, minus 5, so everyone's just indifferent with us. Um, and we get pretty decent like uh, mercenary review now as well. We got three stars, six eight one rated, so that's pretty good. Um, I don't I don't really care about my review score because it's basically just a mechanism to allow you to hire better mech warriors. And I never buy the good mech warriors. I just go and get them as recruits and train them up. So that makes no difference to me. Uh, just in terms of finances here, you can see at the moment we've got pretty extensive finances. When I showed this a long time ago, it will have been several episodes ago, probably when I was still on the Leopard, um, or early on in the Argo, we didn't have any of these levels of improvements. Um, so you can see all this mounts up. So when we've been buying things like the Betapod, drive upgrades, 
um, hyper uh, hydroponic garden, things like that. You have to pay to kind of keep these operational every month. That total cost now is at 322,000 C bills a month, and we're paying salaries of 285,000 C bills a month. So combined, that's um, a pretty significant fee there. So we've got over 600,000 C bills a month. However, we have got 11 or over 11 million C bills in the bank. And you can see that our chart here, like our white pip chart, is now completely full. So we won't go out of, um, well, it'll be what, 50, what's that, 6, 12, 18 months before we go out of business. Um, so we're in a very, very healthy place and all is going very well. In terms of engineering, uh, very quickly show you this. This is kind of where you should be at when you're still like churning through the power emissions, or this is what you should aim to get at. Um, I talked about this when I did like the extended tutorial on engineering. I'd advise that you ignore uh, like the habitat pods because they're very expensive. Like the next habitat pod for me to get will cost me over 200, uh, 2 million C bills. I kind of bit the bullet and got the mech bay one already because eventually I will fill it up with the full 18 mechs and I've had quite a lot of cash recently so I decided to, to pull the trigger on that one. But I think getting the habitat pods probably won't be something I do until I finish the parrot emissions because I don't need it. Even the training modules now I don't need because all my mech warriors are at a very like healthy level so even if they got the like the third level training pod they wouldn't get anything out of it because they're too experienced to, to get any benefit or experience on a daily level so uh, to that end I don't need to improve any of this now um, I've also got 50 on the morale like sheet as well so that's as high as you can go we get 35 resolve per turn from that um, a couple of things we can do to improve morale we can get the ick oh so again we can get the arcade and we can get the uh, low g pool as well but again not something i'm bothered about because we've got full morale so hey ho let's just have a look at um in fact no before we go into the mech bay i'm just going to go into the barracks and i'll introduce you to the final two mech warriors that i have recruited so the first one here is bear and you see he won't get his voice today because i want to turn the uh, the chatter off um because if i'm doing a tutorial they always talk over me on the kind of uh, comms systems which is annoying but he's got a very gruff voice i'm sure you'll hear him at, at some point anyway um bear is I, I don't believe i've shown bear yet um kind of doubting that now i may have shown him at one point i just don't think i have no i'm pretty sure i haven't anyway it doesn't matter um he's you see from his service record here he is a lyron and he's military that fits very much into my uh, like law for uh, Cadian matok who is bear uh, that's how I, I wrote for him. He's a big tank of a guy. He's like well over six foot. He is ex-military. Um, so as you'd expect, a big, big chunky German guy who can basically look after himself. Um, I kind of always wrote it in the law for him that he wasn't the best mech warrior. Like he was just slightly like below average, but they liked him in the company, so they kept him. Um, next up we have got Boudica and uh, I was really glad to get um, Boudica because it, she's quite hard to find for. I basically need to find a mech warrior that's got her characteristics and then edit the profile around that and it was taking me a long time but eventually I did find someone. Uh, Boudica is, uh, this is Samantha Durrant, uh, she speaks with a posh English accent, if you're familiar with this game and you you may have come across that vocal before, it's probably the, I think it's the best mech warrior voice they've got, it's like very unique, so it's very upper class English, uh, which you'd kind of expect from someone from like Davian Space. Um, she is like really the brains behind the Dust Counters in the law that I wrote for them, um, she's I kind of wrote it that she like went to legal college and she is very much like a lawyer. So if she ever feels like she's getting like stiffed on the bill, she's like, that's not right. You're trying to rip us off, yada, yada, yada. So she kind of does a lot of the kind of day-to-day uh, -day enterprise that like a mercenary outfit would need to kind of survive. Um, she is like by far the most important character in the Dust Counters in terms of like keeping them together. Um, but she's also like a bit of a wild party animal. Uh, she's quite a like a weird and wonderful character. I love writing for her. Out of all the uh, the characters that I write for in the um, what eventually become the battalion, uh, Sam is by far the, the funnest to write for. Um, 
just she gets up to lots of like hijinks and she's interesting. Whereas Oculus is much more like he's quite straight laced and serious, and all he really wants to be is like a mech jock. Like he's not really interested in running the company. He just wants to basically, uh, you know, pilot mechs. Um, he d he kind of involves himself on the day to day stuff, but but Sam takes over a lot of the the more important aspects of, of running the like the mercenary unit. Why it was hard to find for her is because you can see she has got Davian Commoner tag, which is something I was really looking for. I would have taken Davian Noble because they're more common, but in the law that I wrote for the Dusk Haunters, um, the Dusk Haunters are from Mendham, uh, which is like right on the like edge of Davian space. It's basically on the between the three borders of um, the Capellans, the Taurians and Davians. It actually appears on this map usefully or on the map for this game usefully enough. And um, Davi this Mendham has basically changed size. So it's at one time in history, like several hundred years before this game takes place in thirty twenty five, it was actually like um, Capellans owned. Then the uh, Fed Sons took it over. Um, and in my kind of law for them, I wrote it that um, the two sides of the family during that, what was effectively not a civil war, but it was kind of a, you know, a, a war of uh, like a change of, I don't know, authority or power, whatever you want to say. And Sam's like branch of the family, the Durant family, remained loyal to the Capellans. Um, actually, no, sorry, the other way around. Sam's uh, family... Um, wanted to have the insurrection and give, go to the Davian side, but the Lemuel side of the family were loyal to the Capellans. And um, it caused a split in the family. And Lemuel's family always therefore considered themselves part of the nobility because they were Canopian, that's oh, not Canopian, sorry, uh, Capellan uh, like nobles, whereas Sam's family like completely renounced it and then just joined like the, the for want of a better term, the Davian like middle classes. And now, obviously, this was like hundreds of years in the past. The family don't care about it anymore. It's kind of a joke. Um, you know, like Lemuel's father and Sam's father were very close. They were brothers, obviously. Um, and it was just like, it was like the, you know, like you did talk around it, like about the Christmas table. Like, yeah, traitor, you know, ha ha, insurrect. You know, like that kind of like banter. Much as you'd get, like, if you had family or you knew your family roots and you found something like that if in like the American or the English Civil War or something, you wouldn't be caring about it now. It would be a joke and it would be the same to these guys. Um, but therefore, the both uh, both kind of families have a slightly different placing in, uh, in like Davian society in that Sam is very much seen as uh, she, like her family went on to be like factory owners um, and Lemuel's family still kind of maintained that aloof, even though they were kind of, um, Capellan, uh, you know, sympathizers or whatever you want to say, things in Battletech change so much, you know, like borders change and planetary governments change and things like that, that you don't usually get like, oh, we're just going to mass, you know, have a, everyone's going to have like a massive rebellion now and we're just going to continue fighting. It's kind of like the flag changes and people are just like, eh, okay, so now we're Davian, right? And that's what Lemuel's family will have had to do as well. So, there's kind of, there's a lot of like interesting weird dynamics going on in the in the Durant family, and I was really glad that I was able to get the Davian common attack for Sam, and then Lemuel is naturally uh, like Davian nobility, so that kind of really reflects the the law that I've written for them. So that's it. That's the final kind of um, lineup here. I don't envisage getting any more Mech Warriors. I've done what I originally wanted to do I've got um, and I'm not including Oculus in this because he is the like the mercenary commander so he's kind of outside things a little bit as for everyone else my intention was to get one uh, mech warrior from every inner sphere power which I've now got and then to get three mech warriors from the um, the periphery powers involved in this game so that's the Magistracy, Canopus, uh, Taurians and the Oregon Reach or the Oregon Restoration whatever you want to call it so that's good. That gives us a lot of variety, a lot of spice. Uh, we've got really interesting characters as well, like Darkstar, who's an absolute madman. Dishonest, drunk, klutz, rebellious, <laughs> spacer. Uh, so we've got some really like interesting uh, like people on the crew, which is very nice. And lots of like varied skills as well. My intention is to kind of get as much of a rounded skill base as I can. Um, so yeah, we'll, I'll continue with that anyway. So I'm not just going to give everyone like, you know, the 
kind of crunchy multi-target skill or anything like that saying that a lot of the the mer uh, the mercenary oh mercenary uh, lots of the mech warriors do have the uh, multi-shot the reason for that um is because there is kind of a core group in the dust counters now if you've ever wondered what the thumbnail is on the um you know on these videos that is actually a piece of art that i got commissioned for the dust counters and the four people that you can see there are actually like oculus is is in the center you can just see his like name tag on there um two i'm just trying to think of it now in my head so to his if you're looking at the photo to lemuel's um right there is uh there's a very little uh like lady that's uh lady death lotus she's actually um i think like 15 when that picture is taken um it's a long story um, but she's very much like she's not meant to be in that picture it's, it, I've written it down, all down in the law and I won't bore you with it here but um, Lady Death Lotus is there, see she's got like the katana she's a Karete and that was like her grandfather's katana uh, then to um, Jessica's right that's Lady Death Lotus you'll see, uh, Lady Death Lotus you'll see Sam uh, Boudica she's kind of like blowing the kiss and then on the very left hand side you have got there so that's KD and Martok you see how like tall he is um I kind of when I like briefed the artist in I said look I just want him to kind of look like um uh what's the 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 film the thing um the I can't the lead character in that his name just like flown out of my head I was like just look like um ah I can't believe I've forgotten his name he's like one of my favorite is Kurt Russell is it Kurt Russell? I think it's Kurt Russell. Yeah, I don't know. I must be having a moment. Um, but yeah, like it, you see, it kind of has like his like look a little bit. Um, because Cadian is just a big grumpy like Steiner um, with the beard and the like the long hair as you can see here. So let's go into the mech bay now. And see where we're currently at in terms of big stompy death machines. So what I'm going to do is, given this is a stock taking uh, mission, so I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about the mechs that I've got on the books now, but I'm also going to talk about the subject of variants to look out for, because very, very handily I've managed to find a variant of a mech that I absolutely love, as opposed to another variant of this mech that you can get that I don't think is very good. So... First of all, let's give a little bit of attention to the Highlander because this Highlander is um, gorgeous and really makes a huge, huge difference at, um, at this point in the game. The jump capability coupled with the fact that the mech warriors that you're using tend to have decent gunnery skills at this point mean that you can kind of get your mech into a position, or get the Highlander into a position where you can do like precision shots uh, for like headshots and I've done that multiple times now with Oculus because this is the uh, the mech that Oculus is currently piloting excuse me and you, that Gauss rifle will basically headshot any mech in the game so if you're lucky enough to get that that you know if you if you do a precision shot on a head and they've got good gunnery and tactic skills it can get up to 20% chance of getting of hitting and if that Gauss rifle hits that twenty percent, if the Gauss, you know, if the um, if the shell, the Gauss shell, whatever you want to call it, uh, hits the head, the head just exploderize, and then you get the full mech, or you get all three points of salvage. Even if you miss that, I've then got a PPC double plus, and that will do um, like a headshot uh, or a single headshot in this game because it does you see sixty points of damage because it's the double plus variant. And then if you miss those two, you've got a chance of at least hitting the head and doing a, an injury to the pilot with the LB2X and 20 LRMs here. So that's very good. Uh, the real kind of like special manoeuvre that this mech has though is if you have a look at the heat efficiency here, unlike um, like, I don't know, like 95 percent of the mechs in this game, uh, this mech has um, an, an, a base heat sinking of 60, um, usually is 30. And that makes a huge difference. What that basically means is, in case you have ever wondered, uh, it's base heat sinking are the heat sinks built into the engine. So on a regular Mac, like not basically not a Star League Mac um, at this point in time anyway, because they don't really know how to make um, uh, double heat sinks. But they, st they still exist in the universe, like they can be on old Macs, but they don't know how to kind of produce them in the factories. Yet that changes very soon, though, um, in regards where this game is currently at. 
And um, yeah, so like you can't ever um, manipulate that uh, particular figure of 60. If you see, if we take the heat sink, the double heat sink off here, you can see it goes down to its um, base 60, and when we put it back on, it goes up to 66. That is amazing because we've been basically running cool with this as long as we're not jumping. And even if we are jumping, we can only jump a little ways anyway with the Highlander. It's only got three jump jacks. So you can basically just like jump and shoot all day long with this mech. And it just is a monumental game changer. I doubt very much that I'll change the loadout of this mech unless I get the Gauss Rifle Plus variants or I get like an LB2 uh, double X variant just because it works so well uh, i think this is like about as optimal as you can get for a mech you can see there just on his like you know on the, the stats he's got here uh movement is as good as it's ever going to get there because the highland is actually naturally a slow mech um it does have it's naturally jump capable that's what it's built for but it's not a quick mech by any standard so that's always going to be sat at three pips but look at that all the other um, like stats here are all nearly full. Uh, only firepower, which is comes in at a two seven five on an alpha strike, and durability, which is uh, pretty amazing. There, I mean, I've got him very well armored here. I could probably put more on the legs, uh, more on the center torso, but uh, I'm more than happy because he's used as like a skirmishing long range mech. So let's go and have a look at uh, the other mechs on the list here the Marauder and the Warhammer we don't have to cover because if you've been watching the previous playthrough you'll have seen them and I've not changed anything I may have changed little things but I've not changed anything worth talking about uh, the Catapult C4 here which I've had for ages now and Oculus was using this um, before we got the Warhammer and an LRM15 or two LRM15s two LRM5s, quite a bit of ammo um, and it's jump capable it's always worth in this game, like splitting the missile loadouts if you can. For instance, if you just put two LRM20s on this catapult, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't be able to kind of carry all that weight with the armor levels that I've got. For whatever reason, though, they've decided that, like, you can, you know, like the way that the, the tonnage is for each of these components, you can get the equivalent of an LRM20. You just have to split it between an LRM15 and an LRM5. So if you do that twice, then you still get the, the full, like, 40 uh, missile, like, salvo on there. And that can be, like, beneficial as well if you've got the different bonus ones. So some might do more stability damage, some might more do, sorry, might do, like, more actual damage. So you can kind of have a bit of a mix and match in doing that. The only kind of consequence is that it costs more slots. So you see we've maxed out here with four, four of the, the missile uh, hard points. You can't obviously do that with like the C1 because the C1 only has two missile hard points. So the, to me, in my mind, if you want to run an LRM platform spam, the Catapult C4 is the way to go. It's completely the opposite from how I feel on tabletop. On tabletop, I much prefer the C1, uh, but the C4 in this game is the superior mech. Uh, we'll leave the Archer for now. Uh, move on to the Grasshopper. The Grasshopper is an amazing mech. Um, the way that I'm running this as well, I'm so happy with it. Uh, this is going to refit. I'll just show you this because it's quite important you get this like dynamic right. You do have to sacrifice a lot of its weight over to heat management. So you see, I've got uh, one double heat sink, two exchanger pluses, and a heat bank plus. Running then two double L lasers on the arms with extra damage. Um, well, one of them's got extra 10 damage, one of them's extra damage and accuracy. Four M lasers and two S pulses. Uh, this guy is an absolute beast, very much like a, a, a skirmishing mech. You see, average range isn't great, but if you get it into those like rear arcs with its jump engines, it just causes like absolute death to to any enemy. But the constant or the payoff is that you must manage the heat appropriately. I've I've run it now a few times and I've come to a really nice equilibrium with it. So you can see that we heat sink thirty six, we alpha strike at seventy eight. You're only really going to be alpha striking with those two S pulses when you're in close proximity to an enemy, though. So generally, you can drop off the the heat levels for the S pulse, which come in at twelve. So twenty four of that don't really count. Uh, not unless you've got like you really want to get in close and do rear arc shots, and then you basically take the the like the excess heat uh, in the knowledge that you've taken out an enemy. I adore this mech in this game. I think it's one of the best skirmishing mechs. It's just beautiful. 
Um, love, I'll play it today actually. Whatever random mission we do, I'll, I'll show him because he has just got a real like flair for doing like damage while keeping relatively com cool, considering that he is a um, like a laser spammer. I'm saying that that's kind of at vanilla level. We might play today in like Martian or um, the desert or something like that, and the heat management might be slightly worse than it usually would be. But in general, this guy is an absolute bad boy. And come out of here, go to the Jaeger mech. The Jaeger mech is something that I just kind of randomly picked up. Um, I was running a Dragon before with a UAC 10 double plus, but I've sold it because it's just now obsolete in this lands. Jaeger mech as well, is, it gives us a different option. It gives us that like real like mid-range skirmishing mech. So two UAC 5 double pluses, two M pulses, a little bit of heat management and uh, well quite a bit of heat management actually and no jump jets you're basically just using this to kind of move and fire move and fire uh, quite like the Jaeger mech it's um, it can look after itself uh, it's it's kind of like a, a really like cheap retrograde version of um, it's like the annihilator of a hundred ton mech like it's got lots of um, ballistic hard points on there I think there are four in total but I think they're all on the arms I believe which is slightly problematic. Um, so you're not really going to be able to kind of utilize it unless you go like for four um, AC2s or LB2Xs, something like that. But for this point in the game, and it gives me that option, if I do need like the ranged attacker, it's a really, really nice option for that. UAC5's got very good range. Impulse, not so much, but as you're closing in on the enemy, obviously you can start to alpha strike and it manages its heat quite well also. Finally, we're going to talk about the Archer, and this is going to be about today's like topic before we do the mission. Uh, this is the Archer 2S. Now, the Archer, much like the Marauder and the Warhammer, which have those inbuilt components, which give, well, for the Marauder, it gives you uh, like the, it's like a lance support module that um, lessens the level of damage done to your lance. And it um, allows the Marauder a bonus in cold shots. I think that's it. And the Warhammer has a very simple one, which is just 10%. I think it's 10%. 10% extra damage, or is it 20? Let's just have a look here. Uh, the optimized capacitors, and it's 20% extra uh, energy damage. Um, that's obviously really, really nice, especially for a big energy spam chap like him. The Archer's equivalent to this is called the Micillary Suite. Um, love this. It basically gives, um, well, I'll read it. So the Archer's enhanced uh, Missilary Street greatly increases clustering in its LRM attacks, which causes greater damage to single locations. It also provides a massive boost to stability damage of SRMs by improving in-flight trajectories. Now, the LRM clustering one is nice, but because LRMs don't do that much damage anyway, that's not going to give you a, a massive bonus. What you really want here is the SRM stability damage. That is absolutely beautiful. That plus 75% is fantastic. Now, if we just look at this fella's loadout, you can see that with that micillary suite, it allows him, uh, and the 2S variant as well, allows him to take four missile hard points, which means I can put both LRMs and SRMs on there to get the full benefit. Now you might be thinking to yourself, yes, but what about minimum distance? Because you can't go too close with the LRMs, but you can't be too far away to fire with the SRMs. Well, there is always, with this variant, for me, there's always a sweet spot. So you can just kind of play around with it, see where that like that interjection between going too far and too close to the enemy, and you'll find that you have amazing like ratios. So you might have like a 80% chance to hit on every missile. I've also put on the TTS here, which gives us extra accuracy to missile weapons. So that's obviously a little bit of extra strength. Got a little bit of heat management on here as well, because the missiles do run a little bit hot when you spam them like that. Um, also, I've noted the Archer has naturally incredible um, melee attack, which, don't ask me why, I've got no idea. Uh, it's just a little quirk within this game. Um, you see, he actually does a hundred base, and then we've got the plus two melee, uh, plus ten on the uh, the melee arm mod there, which gives us a whopping one ten. So if he is like in a, this, if he is in a position where he has to close an enemy down, you can kind of just ignore the missile attacks and just go right for a, a punchy archer. Um, I still to this day don't know how they've like decided upon melee attack rates. It seems to be very arbitrary. 
at first I thought it might be like, oh, well, it depends if the mech's got hands. Like, if it's got hand actuators and arm actuators, then it means it can do, like, a proper physical attack. But then you kind of look at how the mechs attack, and some of them kick, and some of them do punches. Like, then the Warhammer doesn't have hands, but he does an, an amazing attack as well, like, level of an attack. So I think someone's just sat there and thought, Archer, 100, Warhammer, 100, Shadowhawk, X, you know, a Vindicator, Y, whatever. I just... It just seems arbitrary, but it does give certain mechs a little bit more of a like a sting in their tail. Now, on like what the topic that I really wanted to discuss here, though, um, and it kind of ties into this mech specifically, is there is another variant of the Archer that you'll find uh, quite often in this game. Um, in most stores, it will be sold. It's the uh, the Archer, the two R variant. Now again, it's kind of like with the catapult on tabletop. The two R variant is fantastic. In this game, though, because of the missilery suite and how that works, you really don't want to be using any other weaponry on this archer other than missiles, because you want the full like uh, you want every drop of bonus that you can get from that component, and you can only do that by using both LRMs and SRMs. On the two R variant, when it's only got two missile hard points, you're going to have to sacrifice one. That's why the Archer 2R is not as good as the Archer 2S in this game, in my opinion. Again, if you're early on in the game and you get a 2R, var 2R variant, that will become a real game-changer mech for you. But as you go on in the game and you need to get more sophisticated and you need to bring like more bang for your buck with the tonnage that you've got, go for the 2S variant. And it is hard to find, though. That's the one thing I'd say. I got very, very lucky with this variant. I headshotted one, uh, got three points of the salvage, and then uh, several like you know random missions later, I, I destroyed one outright and managed to get the the extra, which then gave me the full four to complete the the two ice, which was lovely. So that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about today. Let's go ahead and do a random mission. See what options we've got here. Uh, we're right on the periphery. I think we'll keep to three skulls. Uh, I'm kind of going between three and three and a half at the moment. So let's see what, see what this contagion one is. Um, destroy base in the desert. Uh, we're doing it for the local government and we're against the magistracy of Canopus. So unfortunately we will hit our reputation with them a little bit. Um, given it's a destroy base, we probably won't get the best salvage. So I'm just going to increase payment here. So 701k and then salvage uh, two, um, two chosen and nine randomly assigned. So let's go ahead and accept. Um, I'm just going to clear this. I'm not going to talk about any of the mechs, obviously, because we just spoke about most of them. Uh, we'll bring the full, like, bad boy lands today, though. So we'll bring uh, all the mechs we kind of... Well, well, as many of the mechs as I discussed there as possible, in the, when they've got four spaces, obviously. We'll bring the arch and the grasshopper, though, because they are new and um, really want to kind of show them off. I'm also, because I, I, I discussed the kind of thumbnail and the characters in that, I will bring that lance. I will bring like the, the Dusk Haunters founder members today. So that will be Oculus and it will be Lady Death Lotus and it will be Bear and it will be Boudica in Bouncer. So let's go ahead and deploy. Destroyed bases are relatively simple in this game. Um, it can be a little bit like laborious, like you you do the mission and then you destroy the base. So it just at the end of it, it's a bit a bit boring. It's a criticism I have actually of this. I think it it needed some kind of like extra dynamic to make these missions a little bit more interesting. Much like if you've ever played uh, Mech Warrior Five, the destroy bases in that are like really fun because you've got to like charge in and wreck the base as quickly as possible, or more reinforcements come to get you. And like there are certain mechs that are really good at wrecking bases, like the fire start is really good at it. You just like run through and smash the base. <laughs> this game's a much more sophisticated variant of Battletech though, so you don't just go and like smash buildings to smithereens like that or run into them, you have to shoot them from afar. Anyway, we're not gonna read any of this because it's pretty simple what we have to do here. We have to blow a base up. So it's right in front of us here, so should be nice and simple. We've got to destroy uh, four buildings and uh, facility defenders as well. So that will presumably be mechs at some point. Here they are. So we've got a 55 tonner on screen. Uh, 
I've kind of, I think I've got now, just looking at the 55 tonner here, I've got pretty much all the medium and light mechs that I want now. I've just got them all in cold storage. Um, you do use those as well, and it's very important that you keep those. Um, try to get out of the habit of selling good mechs. The next stock taking episode that I do will be on the, it will be titled something like preparing for the flashpoint missions. Because unlike the priority game, in the flashpoint missions, you actually have to, um, there are actually like uh, weight restrictions on there. So you need to make sure you've got like 55, 50, 45, 40 ton max, um, or any kind of variety of that as, as you see fit. Um, I'm just going to jump up here, I think, with Oculus. Um, so we've got two max. We've got a, a, the Wolverine 6R, which is the Ballistic Wolverine. Yep. It's the SE5, and then we've got the, the laser spam hunchback there. Um, unusual choice, that's the 4P. Not a big fan of that mech. The AC20 hunchback is far superior, in my opinion. Um, I actually have one on books, um, so there is one in cold storage. So you will be seeing uh, a hunchback. Uh, is it the 4... Okay, is it the 4G variant? I just can't remember what they call it. Uh, anyway, let's give a salvo to this Wolverine, and let's just admire there the heat management of... Um, of the uh, Highlander. We can pretty much, I think, get in four Alpha Strikes with a jump um, in the desert. That's insane. I'll try in this game, so I'll, eventually, I'll try and get a headshot on someone eventually when our resolve is kind of at max. Um, and I'll try and do it with to see if he's currently up to 20%, which I think he will be at this point in the game, given his skills. Ooh, laser, large laser that. And we're gonna, are we going to get spammed now? I think, oh he is, yes, okay. I thought he might be out of range, but he's not. Being in the trees there, um, very, very good. We took a head injury, injury, but that's ignored because we got the cockpit mod, so that's nice. And there's something over there with an AC5. So it's a really, really solid medium lance, what they're rocking here. Um, yeah, very nice. Bouncer, I think we'll just keep you up on high. We're going to just keep like ply plowing into these chaps. Now this is with a jump, so let's see what the... Uh, oh, actually we can't... I was going to target the Wolverine, but we're just out of range, unfortunately, um, for the, like, to hit with the majority of the weapons. So let's just target the Hunchback. You can see we do... That's a obviously a significant level of heat, but that's a lot of um, energy weapons there. So let's just go ahead and fire I think she hit with everything then, did old Boudica, very good. And Lady Death Lotus with this absolutely maniac weapon, which is the UAC-20. So let's just try and take this Wolverine out before um, he gives us any more grief. And there he goes. <laughs> That's a real cheat card, that UAC-20 double plus. You just precision strike to the centre torso on a medium mech and just wrecks it. Um, Obviously, you have to hit the the, the center torsos, but you, that's the highest chance to hit in that area. Uh, but no armor can withstand that that UAC twenty double plus hit. It is absolutely mad. And here we see a prime example of what I'd call the optimum range of the archer. So you can see we are just kind of in that like eighty five percent bracket for both SRMs and LRMs here. So this should get into his armor, into his structure. Takes a leg. Very good. I think we've got a Phoenix Hawk behind him. I've got a Phoenix Hawk on the books as well. Um, this is cold storage at the moment. Do like the Phoenix Hawk. It's got inbuilt um, systems that really improve its uh, jumping. So if you need to be in a mission where you have to basically get somewhere very quick, the Phoenix Hawk is incredibly useful. Right, let's just try and finish this hunchback off. There he goes. So they've lost their uh, two bigger mechs here. So they've got a Phoenix Hawk and something behind. And I presume this will be an attack from a turret. But that's fine. We've got some big lads on the, on the battlefield here. So they can take LRM spams like that. Um, the archer's name there, Art, which is obviously short for Artemis. Um, the archer, um, but can't call him Artemis because there is a weapon system in Artemis, like an LRM 
um, like computer system that helps your, um, your your LRMs hit. It doesn't actually exist in this game, but it's definitely on tabletop. I believe they put it in the um, in the MechWarrior game as well, or the current MechWarrior game. So we've just uh, we, I've not fired the UAC twenty double plus side just to get rid of its retail and to manage the heat a little bit for um, for the Marauder. Again, we're just going to keep piling in at that like lovely percentage range. So we're on um, what was that ninety percent hits there. So you just see the devastation that your missiles can do. So I was saying like early on when I was playing this game, and it it was very apparent like I wasn't playing with. Um, LRMs, I only like them when you are using them on dedicated platforms, like with the catapult or the archer. Just absolutely don't see the point in putting like a random like LRM five or ten. The exception to that is Oculus in the Highlander because that um, the LRM uh, twenty that he's got is pretty devastating in its own right, and it's it basically works in synergy very well with the other weapons because he's a, a basically a big long range uh, platform. All those weapons there are, are traditionally long range, so he's always going to be wanting to skirmish in from afar. Ergo, the LR, well, I say LRM 20, it's two LRM 10s, but you know, do the math. Um, anyway, let's just try and uh, take out this Wolverine, or at least take out his right hand side. Nice. It really is a game changer, that Highlander. I think um, several game changers come up around in this game when you go through the parity missions. The first one is the first like good heavy mech that you pick up, whether that's like an Orion or a Warhammer or um, uh, whether like the Archer Two S, something like that. Uh, the second one is when you get the um, the Highlander uh, because the Highlander is amazing. And unfortunately, I think we took um, a, an injury there to Lady Deathlotus. She already used or expended her cockpit um, like module, so she's taken one point of injury, but that's fine. She can get some vengeance here, hopefully, with a physical attack. 100 damage, but he's still still in um, keeping in there, but he's been knocked over. It's a, a nice... Um, oh, another head hit. Wow, she's going to be out for a long time. She's getting really, really like hit up here, unfortunately. Uh, let's try and get rid of this Wolverine anyway. Yeah, that could be like um, 30 days in the uh, infirmary, something like that. She's only little and she's only young. Leave her alone. Um, that would really annoy Sam. Um, Sam is uh, a bit of a surrogate parent to, um, to Jessica. So you've kind of hit her baby. She will not be happy there at all. As you can see, because she just finished off that Phoenix Hawk. Um, right, now, we may have uh, reinforcements. I mean, it was a three-skull difficulty, so it's not, you know, completely outside the realms of possibility that reinforcements will come. So to that end, I will put the uh, Highlander up on high here in case anyone decides to be cheeky. He can, like, outflank and rain death from above. Everyone else, we're going to run down the centre. Um, how's your armour? She's just been hit by flak, basically, on the head, so that's annoying, but she's all right. She's, she's a tough girl, is uh, Jessica. So, we should... We'll soften this heavy turret up here. So it's a sniper turret. I don't think we will get heavy... Uh, sorry, I don't think we will get reinforcements because there are heavy sniper turrets here. And heavy sniper turrets are pretty... As the name implies, they're quite difficult to destroy. So I think that's why we've got three skulls, because we have the... The heavy snipers here. Um, oh, we can't hit that one, unfortunately. Let's just target the other one then. So this is the LRM platform, and we'll just uh, we won't fire all the weapons here. Nothing really can stand up against the UAC twenty double plus hit. Certainly not vehicles and turrets anywhere. Now let's do let's do split fire here. Lovely. Soften these two up and then Lemuel should be able to destroy both of these from afar with another split attack. Ok, 
Can he do that? I think no, he can't. Unfortunately, he won't be able to hit. Ah, he can do this. Actually, he can hit. It's another reason for having LRMs on the Highlander. It does give you that indirect fire option, like we're going to do here. There we go. This should take them both out. Very good. I don't think we're getting reinforcements, so this one should be relatively straightforward. We've got one more turret to destroy, and then the rest of the buildings here. That was complete overkill, but never mind. Uh, you'll notice the chat is turned off still. Um, I can't abide it when I'm trying to like run the tutorial and they're talking. The they're all talking over me about serving coffee in the canteen and things like that. It really bugs me, uh, so that's why I turned that off. Two um, buildings have to destroy, and we also have to destroy the final. Um, turret otherwise we'll have to run back to the LZ and can you take that final turret out of course I don't think you can unfortunately no what I'm going to do is I'm just going to break this uh, little building here and then just sink his heat so you can alpha strike that turret on the next turn And bear, well, he probably won't be able to destroy this because he's running quite hot here. Maybe he might be able to with the SRMs. Not quite. But you certainly can. So the LZ is now an option, but that will obviously take longer than just going to blow up the final turret. And Oculus should... Oh, can you still not get in there? Ugh, that's annoying. Can anyone get a shot on the turret? I don't... Oh, yes, you can. Good. Oh, picking up some mech signatures. Looks like uh, Canopians. Okay, well, I spoke to earlier then. We do have reinforcements. Let's finish off this turret though, because um, I don't want it spotting for the other lance. And we've missed, unfortunately. So they will be able to LRM spam me now. And this looks like there's a, an assault mech there as well, which is interesting. Uh, the archer should be able to finish this off though with an SRM spam. That's good. So, yeah, a bit, bit spicy this. I think we've got an assault mech running at us now. Oh, we've got, so we've got a few mechs. It's fine, though. I'm still very, very confident. This is a, a hell of a lance that we are fielding here. Uh, let's see what we have. We've got a... And, oh, it's a 60-tonner, not an 80-tonner. Two 60-tonners and a 65-tonner. Um, so that's fine. I thought it said 80. I just misread that. See what one of you are at least and there's a 40 ton at the background so it's just a cheeky wee rifleman here so let's try and take out one of his arms excellent always prepare for reinforcements in this game um, you'll find often that there's like a complaint about this game, which is, oh, well, you only get given a lance and then the game will throw like eight mechs at you and four turrets like we've had today. If you learn how to use Lost Tech equipment and you learn about very like basic rudimentary tactics in like Battle Tech, then you can basically take on several lances. I'd say, obviously, you can't take on like several assault lances, but you could take on a very, very healthy uh, like level of enemy. Um, because um, lost tech and good variants of mechs are the kings of battle tech. So don't be scared of that. 
Um, the game will only ever throw stock variants of mechs at you, and some of them are terrible, like this dragon here. It's nothing to be afraid of. It's got very, very weird weapon loadouts. Um, for what the mech wants to be anyway. It's a very, very strange mech. Now I'm actually just going to sprint in with Art here. Um, hopefully draw some fire. We've got a catapult there with C4. So that's the same catapult we've got on the books. Going to do the same with the Marauder. Always a good tactic to do that. Um, if you're a little bit far away, just sprint in. Don't fire. Uh, you'll sink a little bit of heat uh, doing that and you will just really panic the enemy like they won't know what to do they'll probably focus all their fire on those two big heavy mechs now um it's why i the reason why i really do enjoy maneuverable mechs because it just gives you that option to kind of mess the enemy around a little bit more than you usually would be able to do uh, if you've got very slow ponderous mechs it's really difficult to do that even at a sprint like they're probably going to take an extra turn than a man more manoeuvrable mech with a better engine to get into the fray. Oh, we've got a Vulcan there, which is going to heat us up a little bit. Not too bad, though. It's not as bad as, like, the fire starter. They're only the really, really annoying ones. Um, Right, I think I'm going to try and one... Oh, we probably can't one-shot, because the heat's a little bit crazy here. Sit here. We'll do a... We'll try see what we can get on a precision strike. Just over, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay, we'll do one impulse and the UAC 20 on centre torso. Lovely. It really is a cheat code, that. I almost don't like doing it, but uh, it's just so nice. It feels great when you one shot a mech like that. Ooh, into the structure of Paul Jacob. It shouldn't really surprise me. This has been a, a bit of a long campaign. We've had quite a lot of mechs thrown at us, and good mechs as well. Even the first lance that came across that we came across was a very, very competent um, like lance of mediums. And there was a crazy karate kick there by the archer. <laughs> uh, dragon, I'm not worried about really. He's done a little bit of structured damage there, but that's not something to worry about. And Boudicca in Bouncer. Hopefully you can finish off this Rifleman for us. Lovely stuff. So that's their ability to outflank us gone now. We've killed the Catapult and the Rifleman. And the two um, other mechs are basically right in the death zone. Got some really nasty damage there on that, um, on that left hand side. So we'll keep our right hand showing here. Our right section showing. And let's just try and finish off this annoying Vulcan. Yeah, just Alpha Strike him from behind. This should take him out. <clears throat> Ooh, physical attack. That's nasty. Luckily, though, we got it on the armoured point. Uh, the arms of the archer are like uninhabited. All the uh, missile points are on the, the torsos, the left and right torsos, which is really quite advantageous uh, because the arms are much more susceptible to damage. Um, I think I'm just going to do another physical here, or shall we... Percentages are not good with the LRM. Ugh. Let's do it. I just don't fancy another physical attack when he's got that um, structure damage there. We'll take the 40% the there, because why not? But it's the SRMs that are good on that, because we're doing the extra stability damage. Um, that then leaves you up to do a physical attack. Um, the Oh, they actually moved out of the way, but you missed it. But that's fine, because we just want to bleed some heat there. And might be able to get a cheeky wee rear shot here. We can't fire with the S-pulses, unfortunately. We're not in range of those. Though that might be a good thing, just so we don't overheat. Not sure. I think that might have been on the side that we were hitting there. Oculus should be able to get a rear shot, though, here. And this should finish him off. Never turn your back to a Gauss rifle. So there we are. Um, that was good. That was that was a relatively challenging one. 
Um, good as well to see that like a three skull mission is, is competitive. Uh, we took a little bit of like structure damage there. We didn't lose anything. Uh, but Lady uh, Deathlord has got very badly injured there. Um, so she will be out for maybe like a month. Um, she's a pretty experienced mech warrior at this point though. She's got good like gut skills. And we have got like the second mech bay, uh, med bay. So she should, shouldn't be out for too long. Lovely levels of cash there though. Nearly a million sea bills. So that's lovely. Um... Does it give her... No, I don't think she's... Oh, yeah, 24 days injured, so it's not too bad. Um, everyone got a lovely ki like level of kills there as well. In terms of the salvage, we don't really want anything from the mechs. Uh, ooh, ugh. I was say, SRM6 double pluses are amazing, but the, the ones with the extra critical damage don't really do it for me. I much prefer the ones with the extra damage or... Um, I don't know if you get extra stability damage on the SRMs, can't remember. You certainly do on the LRMs. Any electronics? No, unfortunately. I think we will take the SRM6 double plus. The crits aren't bad, I mean, if you want to go crit hunting. The M laser double plus is nice. Yeah, that's fine. We've got a Wolverine, um, not bothered about a Rifleman. We've got a Phoenix Hawk, we've got the Hunchback with the um, with the AC20 as opposed to the laser spam. And we've got the Catapult C4, so we don't need any of those mechs. And so we'll be selling all those three. And there we are. Um, nice little interlude that to the usual uh, priority missions. I think now the next priority mission is on Smith on. And it's, um, I think this one's relatively challenging. It's where you have to kind of defend the space part against um, a Taurian attack. Uh, I think it's that one anyway. Uh, it's, it's one of the fun missions. It's probably one of the, the best like priority missions in the game. So even though we are right out on the periphery, I think I'll jump back relatively shortly and do that mission. May even record it this evening, actually. Um, so I think I'll end the episode there, and I'll thank you very much for watching, and I'll hopefully catch you next time.